Eileen. This is uh, a film that's not currently, at least as of me recording this, available to stream anywhere. Uh, I got this as a screener because I'm a voting member for the Independent Spirit Awards. And uh, so that's how I've seen this. Um, it does have... It does have an available audio description track that I hope carries over to streaming eventually. Uh, it was done by, I believe, Three Play Media. Is that a thing, Three Play Media? Does that feel like a thing to you? <laughs> four Play? It can't be Four Play, right? It wasn't. I feel like it was Three. Three Play Media. Anyway, um, stars Thomas Ian McKenzie, Anne Hathaway, and uh, Shea Wiggum. And uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, from the director of Lady Macbeth. I didn't see Lady Macbeth, but now I really want to because this is, this is something. This is definitely something. This was uh, released by Neon. Neon actually provided me directly with the audio description for it because uh, the way we watch films on for Independent Spirit d does not support accessibility. So I had to reach directly out to the distributor for <laughs> the accessibility. Um and so thank you to Neon for providing it, and it was worth it. I mean, you're, you guys are getting a good review, and not because not because I feel beholden to you, but because I really thought this was um, just an oddball, <laughs> oddball little film that I, I, this is not what I expected at all. Like, I've heard people talk about Eileen, and even the, the little plot summary of Eileen is... It's true, but it makes it sound way more like a thriller or a dark or something. You know, like it feels <sighs> ominous, so to speak, to say that there's a a young woman whose life is changed dramatically by uh, when and you know that some something changes in her life and and possibly like for the worse or something. It's just it's very. Very just sort of like, ooh, what could this be? I kind of thought maybe this was going to go like a Carol route where like Anne Hathaway and Thomas and McKenzie were going to have that. So that doesn't know. That's not the, this is not Carol either. This is its own thing. This is very much its own thing. Um, I don't even know what to tell you. Like, if you liked this, you'll like this. Um, I, a little bit of Fargo, I guess, maybe. If Did you like Fargo? Um, there's parts of that maybe in here. There's a little bit of that when you first sort of encountered the Coens, uh, in mass. Um, I'm going to say, I know the Coens had been around before that, but I don't know how many people had necessarily seen films like Miller's Crossing and Barton Fink, but Fargo was kind of their big moment, uh, their big hot, hot moment. And I think that was the moment where everybody looked at Fargo and we were all like, what is this? Who are these Cohen brothers and what is it they're doing? It's just like this guy made Lady Macbeth, but I didn't see it. Now he made Eileen and I'm like, what is this? Who is this guy and what is he doing? <laughs> so um, I think he has a very unique voice as a director. Uh, I wish he was a writer-director. I wish I could say that that, that was for certain um, and that this was something that he wrote and then also directed onto the page because the script itself is interesting and the way that it pans out um, instead of just the directorial choices, I, I really needed, now I need to see Lady Macbeth to see whether or not William something, uh, I, I forgot his name. That's the problem sometimes with me doing these reviews. I don't want to be that guy. I see other critics that are looking things up on IMDb in the middle of their reviews. I'm like, come on guys, uh, just say you don't know it or whatever and move on. Um, uh, William Opperton or something. I don't know, but, uh, I'm interested. So Eileen, uh, I think it's in consideration for a couple of things. I think Anne Hathaway is up for supporting performance at the Spirit Awards, I believe. It's a shame that Thomas Ian McKenzie isn't. Uh, she's delightful in this. This is the second time. Uh, she was she was really pretty good in uh, the last something at Soho, whatever that film was last year <laughs> that Edgar Wright directed. <laughs> but I've forgotten the, uh, the title of that. But she was good in it. it. I mean, it wasn't going to get an Oscar nomination, but she was good in it. Um, and this is just another film where she is good in the film. And I noticed her. Unfortunately, the best actress race this year is just like insane. 
Uh, so she's <laughs> very much getting lost in the conversation, but there's something here. Uh, and Anne Hathaway too is, is good. Uh, there's more of a problem with uh, jumping up and down about Anne Hathaway just because of her body of work. So uh, it's sort of is like, is this the best thing Anne Hathaway has ever done? How much, you know, and that's why I think Oscars are not going to latch themselves onto Anne Hathaway because she is very good here, but she's also Anne Hathaway. So at this point, she's been very good many times before. So um, she's just turning out another performance that is absolutely worth watching. Um, but uh at this film and Shay Wiggum, dude, Shay is is uh, very underrated. This character actor who, <sighs> if anybody got traction out of this film, I would love for Shay Wiggum to get traction, just because I I love it when character actors start getting noticed, and Shay has been in so many things um, where he just has not uh panned out where it just hasn't he was uh I know he played Liddy in um in the Julia Roberts one of the we've had we had two limited series because that's what we needed two limited series about <laughs> Watergate and uh I believe he played Liddy in the uh Julia Roberts one which whose name is escaping me right now but uh, I think he had a, he did a really good job there. Um, yeah, it is a very interesting film. I don't want to ruin it. I really feel like if I tell you anything about it, anything that you've heard, just take it, take that, what you already know. It's, yeah, there's a prison in it. Uh, Anne Hathaway comes in as a psychologist that's being brought into this, uh, prison facility. Um, it's kind of how she and Thomasy and Mackenzie meet to begin with. Uh, but this isn't like a prison drama. So it's, it, it, it's kind of a family drama because Thomasy and Mackenzie also has a uh, really kind of an abusive, not really an abusive, like physically abusive, but just sort of like verbally abusive, alcoholic father, uh, that's played by Shea Wiggum. Um, and, uh, he's, he's a hot mess and she has to take care of him. And, and, uh, she's, Thomas and Mackenzie plays Eileen, who's one of these characters that you're not really sure what's, what's up, you know, like she's a little bright eyed and bushy tailed, but it feels almost, she has the same sort of vibe to her that Christina Ricci does on Yellow Jackets, if that makes any sense. Like, there's this little bit of um, unnerving quirkiness to her. Like, like something could go horribly awry. <laughs> or she could be fine. Maybe, you know, she might have a mental breakdown. She may not. But she could be being slowly pushed to the brink by her father, who uh, is, you know not a great person, uh, just for lack of a better phrase. And she sees this, um, sort of like beautiful, strong, uh, personality in, in Anne Hathaway's character, Rebecca, and she's drawn to it and she's drawn to it in like multiple ways, like as a, uh, you know, not just as a start questioning your own sexuality where you're attracted to her, which is sort of, I guess, like the Carol aspect of it. But also just in her assuredness of herself, I think is something that Eileen lacks with, with her, within herself that she sees in Rebecca that she likes and wants to be more self-assured and wants to be, um, wants to have a future. Would love to be able to know that she has a future beyond just taking care of her alcoholic father. <laughs> So, uh, hence the movie goes, and I can't really tell you much more than that because I really want you to discover this on your own. It's very interesting. It's not my favorite film of the year, but this is a film that makes choices and decisions, 
and I gotta honor it for that. I gotta make. Uh, I gotta. I gotta applaud that. Um, I think outright you know, dismissing this film is just not appreciating any of the choices and decisions. There's some other films I've already seen this year that I really loved because they made choices or decisions, and they felt like either a director was trying to expand themselves or they were trying to do something different. I really liked. Uh, Asteroid City is not my favorite film of the year, but I really liked what Wes Anderson was trying to do with Asteroid City, and it felt like he was trying to push himself a little bit more as a director with Asteroid City. Um, I really liked uh, what Ari Aster was trying to do with Bo is Afraid in terms of uh, moving himself as a director, even though there are parts of it that I would not have kept in. And uh, Maestro, I thought, was really Bradley Cooper's... Uh, adventure into um showing us that he is a director he's not just an actor director but he can just be a director um he who also happens to be in his own film so he makes a lot of really strong choices uh to try to get i think really noticed by the director's branch so um eileen feels like a film that makes choices and uh, makes some really strong ones that I really liked. It's very odd at times, but it's not that odd. It's not odd in a way where I think it puts everybody off. It's just odd in a way of, I don't think most people would have chosen that. You know, it's just, it's very, I respect this a lot. I respect this film a lot. Um, did I love it? No, I didn't love it. I'm sorry. But at a certain point, um... I was like, oh my God, <laughs> we got to the point, the shoe dropped and it's a huge shoe. There's a giant shoe <laughs> that drops <laughs> and when it drops, you're just like, wait a minute, what, what film am I in? <laughs> and and uh, that's really all I can say about that is uh, it's, he's so good at keeping this balance to where you think you're watching like one film and then suddenly it's just like, Oh, by the way. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> okay. So, uh, thank you so much for this experience. I, I felt fully rewarded. I don't know what to do with it. The problem is that I'm a voting member of Independent Spirit and, and there are things that I would, I would love to, to dive into with this movie in terms of its writing and direction um and Thomasy and Mackenzie, but I think I Anne Hathaway is why this film is in, cons in consideration, and she's good, but uh, it feels so like like that was the takeaway that everybody got from this film <laughs> was Anne Hathaway. Yes, she's good. She's she's fantastic in this film, but damn. There are a lot of moving parts here, and uh, I guess it's just too competitive of a year, but then, but supporting Spirit blends genders, so they could have had, they could have just easily had Shea Wiggum in here, whose performance is, uh, it's complicated, but uh, it's, it's no less um, impressive than what Hathaway is doing. I don't know, it's... It's an interesting film. I kind of disagree with, with where it's being nominated, and I don't really know what to vote for or how to vote for it, but um, when I when I release my own list at the end of the year, it'll be interesting to see where Eileen shows up, because this is, this is a little odd film that I love. I don't want to use the term quirky, because when I use the term quirky, I, want, I don't want people to think that it's like a Tim Burton film. It's not. It's just its own thing. It's very odd in a way that some of the other films are odd. Um, like Bo is Afraid and Asteroid City and even to some extent something like Maestro. Um, they just make different choices, you know? Uh, he zigs when you think he's going to zag. Uh, he puts something in, some, sometimes something suddenly will happen and then you realize that, did that really, no, it didn't really happen. And he just makes a lot of choices. And I, and I think this is a strong uh, directorial effort. Um, as far as why I just didn't love the film is when you're doing that, when you're doing all of that and you're trying to 
uh, have this constant like push and pull and a little bit of uh, playing around with the audience it does kind of take away from the cohesion of the story. Like, I didn't really know what the film was actually about uh, until sort of the third act. Like, the third act was great. The third act brought everything together, but the first two-thirds of the film, I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I like it. <laughs> but I should know what's happening. <laughs> you know, I should have a cohesive idea of what's happening and not just be impressed by certain choices or little blips of dialogue, you know, or a scene. Um, but it kind of felt like that. It kind of felt like for the first two thirds of the film, I was like, I, this film could go anywhere. I was like, I don't know where this film is headed. I don't know what, what's happening. I don't know what it's trying. I don't know what it wants to be. I don't know where it's going, but I was willing to go on the ride with it, you know? Um, and that says something, uh, but it doesn't make for a perfect film. You know, I think you can do both. I think you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have a film where you're like, this is what, this is what this is. This is what I want out of the film. This is where we're headed. Uh, this is what I want you to think and feel right now. Uh, instead of just sort of thoughts and ideas that eventually coagulate into a third act that will, uh, at least get a reaction out of you. Bear, if nothing else, the third act is is different than the rest of the film. So if no matter how you're feeling about the first two thirds of the film, if you haven't given up on it, uh, the third act just suddenly like snaps into place, <laughs> and it's just like it's the film now. <laughs> you're like, well, I'm in a film. Um, so uh, very good. I'm I'm very I'm. Really pretty excited for Eileen. So uh, I think it's one of the more bold choices made this year. Audio description wise, to the team at th Three Play. <laughs> I think that was the name. I'm so sorry. And the funny thing is, the way it was presented to me, I didn't really have a way of. I would have to watch the whole damn movie again <laughs> in order to get to the ending. And I'm just not that invested. I think it's Three Play Media. So we're going to go with that. Um, I don't believe a narrator's name was given. Uh, but yes, it's a... Um, it's really good. It's it's really interesting narration because there are things that happen. I don't know how to not spoil this. There are things that happen that it doesn't let you know the context in which they're happening. But then you pick up on it afterwards. But that's okay. So this is the kind of audio description that may be a little bit maddening for some people, but when you kind of step back and look at the whole film and you look at what the experience was that they were trying to give you, um, I was fine with it. At first I was like, oh, well, that would have been good to know. And then I was like, well, that's really myopic of me um, because now I see what it's trying to do. And if, if it, revealed itself or tried to warn me or something of then I, I i wouldn't have had the same impact would have changed the context of certain things so i think they handle the choices that are made in this film really well um that's really all i can say i have to talk around spoilers and a lot of the audio description also avoids spoiler uh, 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 involves spoilers and i don't want to spoil this for anybody i don't want people to see eileen um it's it's it will be in someone's top 10 list. There will be somebody who will love the absolute living hell out of this film. Um, it could, it's one of those films that has the ability to become a cult classic hit. One of those things where we uh, talk about it 10 years from now. And it, you know, it's one of those things that just didn't register. It came in in a tough year. People didn't quite see it. Whatever it is, it didn't really get Oscar nominations. But 10 years from now, people are like... Oh my god, did you ever see Eileen? Eileen was great. And I can totally see that happening here. Um, especially if the director goes on to direct things uh, bigger and uh, more high-profile things that end up getting them more accolades and we start looking back at their earlier work. So, yeah, this is very interesting. And I appreciate it so much. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to do with it. 
uh, I'm just going to say I'm giving Eileen a B plus. Um, I definitely think you should watch it. It, I, I don't want to say it's not for everybody, but it, there will be a couple people who won't get it or won't like it. Um, and I think that's happening. And there'll be some people who are just like, eh, no, no, it didn't. I mean, I saw what it was trying to do, but I didn't really care. Fair, you know, I mean, it's going to have different reactions for different people. But if you like your films, if you're, if you keep saying that Hollywood keeps making the same films and you're, you're the one up there on social media going like, I'm tired of superhero movies. This is your film. <laughs> this is one of those films you should watch. Um, where somebody's trying to do something different. And, um, yeah. So, go with that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please click that subscribe button so that uh, I can continue to talk about films with audio description in front of a larger audience. We need to get audio description on all films. Everywhere. All the time. Uh, and... I also have a website, MacMovieGuy.com. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org, and it'll let you know what is audio description where you can watch it. You can go to the adna.org, that's the adna.org, and it'll let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series. And that's it. I'm going to watch something else, and I will see you guys on the other side.